Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. An action plan for the implementation of a project to reduce St. Lucia's food import bill continues to unfold. More direct attention is being paid to standards in early childhood education. St. Lucia and Sri Lanka establish diplomatic relations. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. An action plan for the implementation of a food import substitution project for St. Lucia continues to unfold. The project, funded by the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, is aimed at reducing St. Lucia's high food import bill by improving the production and quality of select crops. Extension officers play a central role in helping farmers on the ground. Some 20 officers recently fine-tuned their skills at a training workshop. The extension and advisory training workshop coincided with the implementation of the fruit and vegetable import substitution project aimed at reducing St. Lucia's food import bill by reducing the level of imports of seven agricultural crops. The project is being implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives with the help of the Taiwan Technical Mission through its International Cooperation and Development Fund. According to Chief Extension Officer Camille Jabaptiste, the recent shifts in agriculture and economic development have demanded a shift in how farmers grow based on market demand. In the face of all these shifts, we continued to trod in the area of ensuring our national food security. And, and, and that mandate is to ensure that we have sufficient safe food at all times. We need to ensure we may never get to the place of food sovereignty as a small nation, but we need to ensure that we have the base, our bases covered so in the case of disasters globally, whether it is wars or climate change itself or all kinds of disasters that hinder the movement of food globally, we need to ensure that we are equipped to help farmers to produce optimally so that at least we do not starve to death. According to the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, extension officers play a critical role in equipping farmers with the necessary tools and skills to deliver the best locally grown produce to their intended markets. The workshop, he says, is essential in the country's quest for food stability. We are here today because we have agreed that the vegetable import substitution program will be the responsibility of every extension officer in the Department of Agriculture. You would have to identify your farmers. You would have to identify the targets. You would have to supply timely information as far as crop monitoring is concerned. And of course, the whole question of evaluation and monitoring is critical. The project will seek to not only revitalize the agricultural intelligence information system, so that it collects data on the production and marketing of fruits and vegetables, but also by analyzing market demand for produce and helping farmers' cooperatives plan growing seasons based on market demand. And whilst we are hearing every year our food import bills increasing, and that's the reality is that the information is there. We cannot produce everything. We cannot. But when we got the seven crops we have targeted for the first phase of that program, I believe that we, if we put our shoulders to the wheel and we do what's necessary, we can create a dent in reducing the importation of these crops. So the critical link in allowing us to achieve our objective are you, the officers out there. That's a critical link. The workshop was held under the theme, Equipping the Modern Extensionist. St. Lucia's national culinary team more than sizzled at the just-concluded taste of the Caribbean competition held at the Hyatt Regency, Miami. The St. Lucia culinary team received a warm-up welcome on their return home by the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association. It was a proud moment for the team as they secured a number of awards at the 2019 Taste of the Caribbean competition held recently at the Hyatt Regency in Miami. These included Best Rum Cocktail Award and Caribbean Bartender of the Year Honorary Mention, Craig Andes of Sandals Grand St. Lucian Spa and Beach Resort. 
Contemporary Caribbean Street Pork Competition, Pork Shoulder Grand Champion, Joanna Alexander of Marigold Bay Resort and Marina, and Danny Mann of East Winds Inn. Caribbean Pastry Chef Competition Gold Medal, Imani Hippolyt of Jade Mountain. Caribbean Junior Chef Competition Gold Medal, Zahim Kade of Cap Maison. Team Manager for the National Culinary Team, Richardson Skinner, said that he is extremely proud of the team. The determination and the passion from these individuals who make up this team that allow them to be able to find the time and to find the energy to do so. I am personally extremely proud of each and every one who followed my leadership along with the culinary committee team, um, the discipline uh, to be able to go up to Miami and make all of us proud. I would like to say to St. Lucia that this team is, in my opinion, in all of the competitions that I've been into and, and, and all of the teams that I've led before, is the most love you could feel within a team. The camaraderie between each and every one is so inspiring. And um, that is something I could tell you was felt throughout the entire competition. The National Culinary Team also received awards for the Caribbean Chocolate Competition, Silver Medal, Steffi Marius of St. James Club, Morgan Bay. Caribbean Seafood Competition, Silver Medal, Ricardo Jose Jr. of Harbour Club. Caribbean Beef Competition, Bronze Medal, Vernon's Door of Tappers on the Bay. Caribbean Chef of the Year Competition, Bronze Medal, Clayton Julian of Sanders Regency La Top Golf Resort and Spa. And Caribbean Team of the Year Competition, Bronze Medal for the St. Lucia Culinary Team. St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, SLHTA's Executive Vice President and Interim Chief Executive Officer Nurani Aziz explained that despite the short preparation time, the team's performance left him in awe. Your spirit is indomitable and I have nothing but raw respect for what it is you are able to accomplish in the competition. But more has to be said about what happened behind the scenes in the competition. When chefs left their stations to help other chefs, when they saw other destinations in need and rose to the occasion, sacrificed the purpose that they were, they were there to accomplish and to help other culinary colleagues in the struggle to ensure that for everyone it was a win-win and to emerge out of that. SLHTA's Tourism Enhancement Fund's Projects Coordinator Wendell George, revealing that the 2019 Taste of the Caribbean competition would be his last, shared some heartfelt words. You guys have really inspired me, um, not just you but the chefs that I've worked with over the years. It's been a really, really interesting journey for me at SLHTA, working with chefs from a secondary school, um, molding the young ones into the culinary arts and into the culinary field. It's really been a pleasure working with all the chefs um, and batten battenders as well. And um, it, it is even better to end my stint at SLHTA on that note. So guys, thank you so much for the experience and I've I've really learned a lot from each and every one of you. The 2019 National Culinary Team consisted of Chef Craig Andes, Joanna Alexander, Imani Hippolyt, Zaim Kade, Vernon's Dorm, Steffi Marius, Ricardo Jose Jr., Clayton Julian, Gabriel James, Shervin New Three, Aldric Jabatis, Verdili Byron, and Marius Andrew. For the Government Information Service, I am General Novel. As St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney assumes the chairmanship of the CARICOM Conference of Heads of Governments for the next six months with the additional responsibility for lead as Sustainable Development and Climate Change. Minister for Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, has been strengthening the foundation for St. Lucia's continued action and meaningful engagement at the international and regional levels. Minister Rigobert led St. Lucia's delegation to the preparatory meeting for the United Nations Climate Action Summit in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates, from June 30th to July 1, 2019. The meeting took stock of progress so far across all the action areas of the Climate Action Summit and identified and developed proposals based on the criteria established for initiatives to be considered for announcement at the summit. The United Nations Secretary General will convene a Climate Action Summit in September of 2019 to develop solutions in six areas, 
a global transition to renewable energy, sustainable and resilient infrastructures and cities, sustainable agriculture and management of forests and oceans, resilience and adaptation to climate impacts, and alignment of public and private finance with a net zero economy. The Government of St. Lucia, through the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, in collaboration with the Organization of American States, has launched an Early Childhood Development Standards Sensitization Project. More in this report. The official launch of the OAS Early Childhood Development Standards Sensitization Project was held under the theme towards a more quality-assured early childhood development sector. District Education Officer Cyrus Sipal, sharing remarks on behalf of the Chief Education Officer, quoted a review conducted by the National Association of Early Childhood Education in the United States of America. The classroom themselves are very lively, brightly decorated, must be in, sorry, must be interactive and stimulating to foster an exciting learning environment. This is where the foundation for the child's future is set. And ladies and gentlemen, the chief again extended, and then she, she, while we were speaking, she said that she wants to see the, the time when the early childhood um, centers would have that, that, that setting where education will be stimulated. Ministry of Education's Education Officer of Responsibility for Early Childhood Education, Agnes Prince, highlighted the unit's vision. The Early Childhood Services Unit of the Department of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development is mandated to ensure that quality services are delivered at all early childhood centers on the island. We have a vision that every child in St. Lucia shall have access to quality early childhood services, a sound start to life, and the opportunity to develop to his or her full potential. Prince indicated, however, that the unit is faced with several challenges. She remains optimistic that given the focus being placed on early childhood development, the sector is soon to see a turnaround. Representative of Seneca College Canada, Terry Kelly, indicated that St. Lucia and Canada both share a passion for early childhood development. Kelly explained that Canada has been collaborating with St. Lucia since 2013. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Kendall Kodra, officially launched the OAS Development Cooperation Fund project, being funded via grant to the tune of 83,000 U.S. dollars. There are a number of activities or initiatives that the Department of Education is undertaking because we have recognized, yes, we have recognized that <coughs> We must place a greater emphasis, and our thrust is now moving in that direction. For a number of years, this sector, along with the special education sector, had been, I think, I do not want to say it, but neglected to a certain extent. <laughs> but we marginalized. marginalized. But we are now placing great emphasis on these two areas, the special education needs and also the early childhood education sector. The aim of the project is to move St. Lucia towards a more quality-assured early childhood development sector. Partners for the project include the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, and Seneca College, among others. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to be heard. This means that every consumer who is dissatisfied with a good or service has the right to lodge a complaint to the provider of that good or that service. This should be the first point of lodging a complaint. Ensure that the receipt, as proof of the transaction, is available. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome, everyone, to your nightly update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. 
I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 CARICOM 10K Road Race came off on Sunday and saw victory for the official Vincentian pair in both male and female categories. The male first place went to Junior Ashton and in second position was Calig Saint-Jean of Antigua and Barbuda. Finishing third was Justin Hodge of Anguilla. The first female to finish was Linda McDowell of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, claiming her fourth title in this event. In second among the females was Kanisha Pascal of Grenada, followed by Barbadian Carly Pipe in third place. Actually, the ladies finished in the same order as they did when the run was held in Montego Bay, Jamaica last year. Sunday's 10K started just outside the Marina Haven Hotel in Rodney Bay. The 5K, which started at the Maricel Corinth Junction, was won by Tariq Xavier of the VFO Comprehensive Secondary School in the male category, while one of his schoolmates, Zadie Setwi, was the first female finisher. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports held their school sports awards on Friday with cricketer Zadia James emerging with the prestigious award of Outstanding Female Schools Personality over the last school year. She spoke to NTN Nightly and stressed how delighted she was at copying the award. It feels really good because I wasn't expecting that I was, when they said female, I was thinking of Julian Alfred, the star athlete. But when they said about representing countries and then I got an idea, it was me. And then going up that stage, not frightening, but I was, after when I was reading, I got warm. Outstanding female school sports personality, Zayda James. And with that item, we come to the end of your segment from Youth Development and Sports for today on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The government of Sri Lanka has established diplomatic relations with the government of St. Lucia with effect from the 25th of June 2019. The agreement to establish diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and St. Lucia was signed by Dr. Amrith Rohan Pereira, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to the United Nations and Cosmos Richardson, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of St. Lucia to the United Nations. The establishment of diplomatic ties between Sri Lanka and St. Lucia will enhance the existing friendly relations and cooperation in the political, socio-economic and cultural fields for the mutual benefit of the two countries. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Prime Minister Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. One of the eight universally accepted rights of the consumer is the right to safety. This means that consumers must have the right to be protected against products, production processes and services which are hazardous to life or health. Such products and services must meet established national standards. These standards give the consumers the assurance that the product is safe for use or consumption. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci au temps, Nisha. Merci, Madame, département qui n'est responsabilité pour information. Un gouvernement, cette le CGIS, a sur le télévision national pays à NTN, composé de Nouvelle Creole, président Primus Hutchinson. Pour plus de 40 ans, le gouvernement des pays Cuba, j'ai apporté l'occasion pour cette le CGIS n'y ont plus haut éducation. Depuis l'année 1961, plus que 70 étudiants sortis en 159 pays, j'espère se valer l'éducation Cuba. Relation ça là, qui cette ni et puis Cuba, j'ai l'occasion de plus que 600 professionnels avec les spécialistes qui trouvaient tout étudiant à l'université des pays Cuba. Récemment, en l'autre sept les étudiants trouvaient l'occasion pour suivre Wavio à dans un pays qui ni l'on ne et pour produire les plus hauts spécialistes et professionnels des médecins. Ambassade du pays Cuba pour cette ici, Alejandro Simian Casmarin, déclare que le pays Cuba a toujours fait comme il peut pour faire contribution pour le développement de cette ici. Ambassade Cuba a ajouté qu'il y a une contribution qui le pays Cuba a continué à faire pour renforcer la capacité de cette ici. Très important, mais en même temps, ça 
yo c'est yo qui a trouvé bénéfice là qui a été responsable pour finir ça yo j'ai commencé à ministre de santé on a bien réalisé que aussi c'est un assez étudiant qui te suivi étude de l'université Cuba déclaré que c'était une occasion qui chérit autant selon on a Isaac étude des affaires médecins c'est un qui dignifie autant et ajouté que ça c'est une profession qui mérite on y humilité l'honnêteté respect et quand vous pignez, il y a une culture au pays Cuba qui a cloué à l'esprit de celle-ci. Chef officier de plan, ministre de l'Éducation, Dr. Claudia Louis, dit que ça a apporté un pile de croyance pour un autre gagne étudiant qui a quitté celle-ci pour suivre l'étude à Cuba. Dr. Louis a vu que nous avons brisé des citoyens qui sont bien qualifiés, mais de la même façon, nous avons brisé des peuples qui ont fait des choses très critiques, qui ont capacité pour inventer et bien accouré dans l'affaire business. Il y a aussi informé ces étudiants qui ont déjà pas seulement, ils pas seulement expérimenté la culture cubaine, mais aussi ils ont aussi expérimenté des pays Afrique, Sud de l'Amérique et d'autres pays en Caraïbes. Le ministère des Affaires et du Développement économique a commencé à une initiative en préparation pour le census 2020. L'initiative, c'est pour considérer sérieusement les gens qui sont déshabillés. Alors, ce qui a fait, c'est pour établir des informations sur les déshabillés et garder à qui meilleure manière. Ils ont participé à développer une société et improuver l'économie nationale et régionale. Selon Kerry Joseph, qui est le deuxième chef des affaires économiques en département, depuis l'année 2011, c'est le CJA pour une démarche pour établir l'égalité. Parmi les gens qui sont déshabillés, ça a été fait par un agrément qui est aussi en Nations Unies pour la droite des gens qui sont déshabillés. Selon l'assistance de l'égalité permanente, la ministre de l'égalité et de la justice sociale, Mme Lenit Joseph, tout ce qu'elle a fait pour procurer et pour faire assurer que les déshabillés trouvent le droit et le respect et la dignité comme les gens qui sont déshabillés. Le projet a été trouvé établi jeudi, le 28 juin, l'année ici. Le ministre de l'Agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a cuit sur les pêcheurs pour toujours prendre une bonne précaution pour qu'ils aient allé à la mer. Comme les pêcheurs qui ont observé et célébré, ils ont observé et célébré les fêtes des pêcheurs samedi passé. Le ministre de l'Agriculture a fait, ils savent qu'il y a un autre problème, mais le département a travaillé et puis l'autre institution a joué pour faire une opération plus facile. Nous avons la nuit chaque trois cas, nous avons la nuit chaque challenge, ce gaz nous suit là, c'est un mot en chaque un, à bas chaque trois cas. C'est passé ici tout seul, votre corps en vision, nous avons parlé et puis même qui manière nous a ouvert comme problème ce gaz nous suit là. Et puis of course introduce new technology pour assister les pêcheurs. Ce mot veut dire that con en ministry, mon mot veut et puis le gouvernement dit that nous bien clair et puis ça qu'a fait. Et puis, nous voulons wish tous ces péchés à la bonne fête. Et, messieurs, mesdames, ça c'est côté nous avons votre nouvelle nous pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer comment vous avez la vie et la nouvelle à quoi vous avez. Je vous remercie pour cette nation. Merci, on peut le primus. Et ici, on regarde ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Saharan dust haze will continue to cause a reduction in the visibility around the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Moisture and instability associated with a tropical wave will cause showers and isolated thunderstorms over the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles during the forecast period. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.38 p.m. and will be low again at 7.58 p.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 4.45 p.m. and will be low again at 9.25 p.m. The seas locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells 6 to 9 feet or 1.8 to 2.7 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds, rough seas and reduced visibility. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.39 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.